The awesome folks at Fishman doing another riff rundown, live guitar lesson. You guys know the drill. I teach you how to play a song in an hour. No edits, completely live. So, so happy you guys are here. Again, if you guys are enjoying these weekly live lessons, be sure to subscribe to the channel, Angela Petrilli Music. Today, we are going to be going over my version of Tennessee Whiskey. So this is my most popular video on Instagram, which is such an honor and just, it's, it, it's such a fun song to play. And it's been so cool seeing so many people really get a lot of, of great stuff out of that particular video. So I figured today I'm gonna to show you guys some tricks of the trade and how I play my version of Tennessee Whiskey made famous by George Jones, David Allen Coe, Chris Stapleton, okay, written by Dean Dillon and Linda Hargrove. So today we're gonna to be going over that tune. Have an electric guitar in standard tuning, folks. If you got an acoustic, you can do it. The solo might be a little tough. Again, we're gonna be going over every single part of my version of Tennessee whiskey today. So before I get started and play through the tune for you, please let me know where you are tuning in from and your favorite electric guitar. Okay, so where you're tuning in from and your favorite electric guitar. So let's go ahead and get started with Tennessee whiskey. <clears throat> So that's what we're gonna be going over today. We're gonna to be going every single little part. Um, again, this is gonna be for my advanced students, my beginners and my intermediates watching. Don't worry, take little bits of this. You can absolutely play this too. Again, as I always say in these lessons, slow and steady wins the race here. You can do this. So this tune, right, if we're, if we're looking at these chords here, okay, I'm doing a ton of inversions. I'm playing three chords. I'm playing A, I'm playing B minor, and I'm playing this D over F sharp. Those are the chords that I'm using to play this tune, okay? And of course, I'm doing little inflections and little cool triads, riffs, that sort of thing. So we're gonna be covering all of that today. I'm playing with the chords in this song. So again, I'm gonna break this down into steps here. The intro, let's see, I've got five different parts in the intro, we're gonna go through those. We've got, then got a verse chorus, and then we're gonna have the solo, which I'm gonna break down into two parts. After that solo is another chorus, but again, is very similar to the chorus that we're gonna learn the first time around. So, so yeah, so those are gonna be the parts today. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've got our first part of that intro, and it goes like this. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over this part. Open E string, your E note. 
get your first finger hammer onto that F sharp second fret of that E string. That's part two. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So we have our E, F sharp, A note, open A string. Now, first finger, place that on the C sharp, fourth fret of that A string, and slide it back. And then release. Hear that A? I'm gonna do that again really slowly here. Again, this, my version of this, is all about finesse. It is all about finesse with the left hand and the right hand. So there's gonna be a lot, a lot of details today. So, but again, what's so great is this is gonna be on YouTube and you can go and rewind and do all that stuff and watch the original and <laughs> all that good stuff, all that good stuff. So, again. That's what we're shooting for, okay? Now that open A string, right, leads right beautifully into your A chord. Okay, so I'm gonna do that riff again a couple times slow and then to speed and then we're gonna go ahead and add that A chord at the end. Okay, so here we go. So, again, takes a little bit of finesse, but you'll get there. Just like that, okay? So now that A chord, notice how I'm playing it there. Again, open version of the A chord towards the top of the headstock, or, or towards the headstock, top of the fretboard, okay? Second finger, second fret of the D string, that's your E note. Second or third finger, second fret of that G, that's your A, and then your pinky finger is playing the C sharp, which is located on the second fret of that B string. Now, with this song here, let's talk a little bit about the right hand technique. I am doing hybrid picking for a lot of this, okay? This part included. If we have a look at my right hand here, now, I'm attacking the strings with the right hand, my middle finger and my third finger. Flicking upwards, starting from that B string, just like that. And have a touch of reverb on your amp when you do this too. So just like that, okay? So let's do that a few times here, you can do this. Okay, nice, clean, finesse, think finesse. like that okay so that's how I like to grip that A chord there in most cases if I'm playing blues I'll go ahead and do the, the first finger but in this case I like playing it this way now I do a quick A sus4 okay all I'm doing there to make that A sus4 happen is I am moving the pinky over to that third fret of the B string now, if you notice here, I am only strumming this one time. I'll show you again. I'll do it a little slowly here. See my hands doing nothing? One strum. So make sure, let me do that a little cleaner. Okay, so make sure when you're doing that right hand, right? Make sure it has enough power to sustain those chords. Because we don't want. It's not as flowy, right? It doesn't fit into that finesse that we really want for the song. So, just like that. Takes a little practice with the left hand, takes a little practice with the right hand, but you can do it, okay? That's what you want there. So, that's part one of the intro. Cool stuff, right? That's what's happening there. Let's go ahead and look at part two. And I'm seeing some questions in here. Don't worry, folks. I'm going to answer those too because it's a live Q&A too. So we've got this part as part two of our intro. Again. 
and I'm thinking, I, as I'm sure you guys can tell, I am a big Hendrix fan and big Mike McCready fan, so you can hear this in my version of this song. So when you are playing this, think, what would Hendrix do, right? How would he play this? He was a big inspiration for me in this version, um, my version of Tennessee Whiskey. So again, think spatially, right? Peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys here. We don't want to play a million notes. Let these chords ring. Let the sustain be your friend here. Again, good, good technique with that right and left hand, okay? Finesse. It's all about the finesse. So here's part two again. <laughs> a lot going on if you notice I'm using my thumb in this too okay so what we're gonna do here first finger put that on the second fret of that a string B to C sharp second fret fourth fret sliding back to the B then your open a string B C sharp back to B I'll do that again a little slowly here Again, use the second finger or the first finger to play this riff, this. Because when we want to play the B minor, guess what? We're already ready to go because that first finger is there and engaged and ready, okay? Then you play your B minor bar chord. And notice too with the right hand, I'm not picking all of these notes. I'm not doing that. Plucking it twice. See, I'm only plucking that two times. Again. And then, again, playing that B minor, plucking upwards, hybrid picking here, your second and third finger upwards on that B string and snap it like that. Again, thinking a little country too, right? That kind of chicken picking sort of feel. Okay. Now, you want it to sound a little higher like I just did, no problem. Do the attack from the E string. If you want to do it from the B string, you like how that sounds better, or from the E string. Same attack with the third and fourth finger, or second and third finger on that right hand. Okay. So it's cool stuff. I'll let you choose. I know when I play it live, whatever I'm feeling. If I like the B string, I'll do it. If I like the E string, I'll do that too. So totally up to you. So we've got... Now, that's what I'm doing as far as like, I'm creating an atmosphere of like some bass happening, right? Or, or, or like a drum kind of roll thing. Cause again, I'm sure as you guys have noticed, I'm a very rhythmic player. So I'm thinking with this, I'm thinking like a drummer too. And really playing around with that space, okay? So what I've got here, after we do our B minor, <laughs> Then I go to my B minor inversion up here. Here's what's happening in between this B minor and this one. Get your second finger, ninth fret of that E string, the C sharp. Slide it back. Get your thumb, second finger, F sharp, and slide that to B at the seventh fret of the E string. So this move will look like this. Okay, I'll do that again. It's gonna feel a little wacky if you're not used to using your thumb. But you'll get used to it, <laughs> okay? Now I'll put it in context with part two of that, of that intro. See how fast it is? And then you complete with that B minor Okay, inversion. How we do that? Pretty simple here. First finger, put it across the seventh fret of the 
G, B, and E string. Should sound like that, okay? With the thumb on top for some added bass, okay? Just like that. Let's go ahead and do that from the top of part two of the intro. Now, with that, I'm giving you the option two. How I like to do that is from the B string. I'm not playing the high E. If you want, incorporate it. It's gonna sound good, still B minor, right? I'll leave that up to you. Now, as if you notice, that is a slide backwards, okay? So once we play that B minor, let it go. Slide it back. Okay, cool stuff, right? Let's go ahead and do parts one, parts two of that intro. Okay, again. So that's parts one, parts two. Let's go ahead and go to part three. Sounds like this. Incorporating our third chord, that's that D over F sharp, okay? Here's what's happening there. Again, similar riff from that B to C sharp, okay, to the second fret and fourth fret of that A string. Okay, so that happens three times. One, two, three, B to C sharp. C sharp to B, fourth fret, second fret, A string. Again, I'll do that a little slowly here. One more time. Now these, I am only plucking the string when I am hitting that B note, second fret A. Okay, that's all the power I'll need from the right hand to get those notes the way I want them. Now, then again, I'm sure you guys have noticed, go ahead and play that B minor bar chord again. Again, upwards, grab it, flick, like that. Okay, squeeze up just like that, okay? So again, one more time. Pretty cool, right? A Little bit of reverb on that amp really, really helps and I'll be sure to talk about all the gear in a minute, so. There's our C sharp slide again, using that with the second finger C sharp, ninth fret of the E string sliding back, okay? Now, let's go ahead, incorporating that. One more time. Now, what we're gonna do here, grab your third finger, okay? On that left hand, place it on the C sharp, that's on the fourth fret of the A string, and we're gonna slide that to our F sharp on the ninth fret of the A string. Then that is the top of our inversion of that D over F sharp, okay? So this is the F sharp. We're gonna go ahead and play the part of the D chord here with our first finger. Place that on the seventh fret of the D string, that is your A, okay? And you're also gonna use that first finger placing that on the seventh fret of the G string, that is your D note, okay? So when we play this chord, that's what we want, okay? That's what we want, that F sharp, we want that A, and we want D. So, when we play them together, the third is on top. Third is on top, F sharp's on the top, okay? So, let's go ahead and do that again. I'm gonna do this nice and slowly here, giving it some context. Here's part three of the intro. Sliding that 
chord back as well. Okay, let's do that again. Again. stuff right so those are the three parts now we've got our last part or our fourth part of five simple okay so this one here first finger playing the B note again second fret of that A string sliding up to the C sharp fourth fret A back to B open A string What we're gonna do next, after that, grab your A chord here, another inversion that we're doing. Here's how we play it. Thumb, fifth fret, E string, that's your A note. First finger, place that on the E, fifth fret, B string. Second finger, you want that on the sixth fret of the G string, that is your C sharp. Third finger is playing the A, seventh fret of the D string, okay? So that and your thumb. Again, how often did we see Hendrix do these chords, Mike McCready do these chords? Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now combining both parts. I'm doing a suspended four chord there. All we need to do to make that happen, we already know how to play our A in this inversion. Get your pinky, okay? Place that on the seventh fret of the G string. It should sound like this. Beautiful chord, right? Release it, you're back to A major. Okay, so here's how we do that. Okay, cool stuff, right? We're getting through it. We're getting through it. This is great. Again, yeah, sus four chords are some of my favorite chords. Really expressive, really, really beautiful. Okay, so that's what we're doing. Let's go through the four parts that we have done so far. The final part is that little riff. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So here we go again from the top first four parts. stuff right now the riff that goes into the verse here's how we do that get your second finger sliding it from the fourth fret of the G string another B to C sharp movement okay so fourth fret to sixth fret of that G string first finger playing the E note fifth fret of the B string going back from that C sharp at the 6th fret to the 4th fret, B. Then getting that 1st finger, A note, 2nd fret of the G string. Open, A string. Just like that, so. Okay, so that's the whole intro. Let's go ahead and go through that again. the intro cool stuff right so there it is those are all five parts there so I have a note here that it's time to take some of your questions so let's go ahead and do that I'm getting it ooh okay what are the pickups what are the pickups 
getting lots of questions about the pickups, talk about them. So these are the Fishman Fluence single width Strat, uh, Strat style pickups. I love these pickups on this guitar. Um, they're really great. I, as far as settings go, I have it set to setting one, okay? Because it's got a push pull here on this third knob, but I am on setting one, okay? So the knob is still in. And then as far as the pickup selection, I'm a, I, I like section two for this tune. So that's where I'm at there. As far as tone, I'm up to 10 on both of them. Volume is at about six and a half, okay? So that's what I have here. Again, if you're playing a bigger room, feel free to turn that volume way up. Yes, rock on folks. As far as the amp, I am using the same exact amp that I did in the video. Uh, it is my Fender Blues Junior. So that is plugged in here. I love that little guy. It's such a great amp. So that's what I'm using here. Um, SM57 being mic'd to all of you. That's what's happening here. Guess what? No pedals at all. It's all these pickups, folks. It's the pickups and the guitar and the amp. I am not using any pedals. I didn't use any pedals in that video, so I'm not using any in this one either. So it is all tone and guitar. You know you have a great guitar. You know you have a good set of pickups when you can just plug in the guitar into an amp and it sounds awesome. So that's a big thing for me when I am buying guitars. If I plug it in and I don't like how a guitar sounds straight plugged into an amp, I look at another one. So make sure, you know, when you're, when you're playing, it's got to sound great through an amp without any pedals first, but pedals are pretty awesome too. But just, yeah, there's no, no pedals here today, folks. Okay. So, uh, folks are asking as far as string gauge that I am using here on my Fender Strat. Uh, I've got Daddario's um, NYXL lights. So tens are what I am using here. Um, how old is this Fender? I believe it's a 99 or a 98. So this is a Fender American Deluxe. And my buddy Bill Asher made the killer custom pick guard on this. So shout out to, shout out to Bill. <coughs> Love that pick guard, it looks so cool. Okay, so that is the intro there. Now, as far as the verses, we are using those same three chords, okay, that we did at the top. You have your A major. I mean, if you're counting your A sus four, then I guess it's four chords. So, so yeah, our A, our A sus four, our B minor, and our D over F sharp, those are coming into play in the verses as well, okay? So, as far as how I am doing this, here is, let's see, I'll do this verse. I'll do the verse and then we'll, we'll hop on to the chorus. So let's break down the verse first. And, and the verse starts at 30 seconds on, on the video, if you guys go back to the original video on my YouTube channel. This starts at 30 seconds, okay? So here we go. So we've got the riff. <laughs> Don't do the A there. Let's do that again. I'll do that again. So let's go over that verse. Again, we're gonna go get our thumb, slide it from that F sharp to A. Second fret to fifth fret of that E string. Notice hybrid picking here. I'm doing that attack again with that second and third finger. Plucking upwards on that B string, just like that. doing that A sus4 pinky finger. And notice, enough attack to fulfill the power needed to play the rest of those two chords. Cool stuff, right? So again, again,
again. One more time for good luck. Just like that. Yeah. All about groove. All about groove and finesse. You can't play this straight. It just doesn't feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. Really, really give it that groove and that feel. Like think about, I don't know, like it's very aquatic, right? It moves and moves. So let the song move. Let the song move. Okay, so that's our A, A sus four, back to the A. Now, I'm getting my third finger, or my second finger, placing that on the 10th fret of the E string, sliding back to open E, and then getting my thumb, second, fi second fret of the E string, F sharp, all the way to B. So that move looks like this. Give it some context with the A chord. And then go, there goes our B minor. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that again. From the A. To our B minor, okay, same attack, or same, same inversion and attack that we did in the intro. Okay, just like that. Second and third finger. Upwards on the E string or the B string, completely up to you. Or whatever you're feeling. As long as there's a touch of reverb on that amp, good to go. Okay, so that's what's happening there. For context, let's go ahead and do that again. Okay, just like that. Now, after that B minor, we're gonna go ahead and reach for that D note again on the 10th fret of the E string with your second finger. And we're just gonna do that again, okay? So like this. From the A for context. And out, I cut it a little short. Okay, so that's what's happening there. All right, so just like that. Now, we go back to the B minor after this. Again, I use the pick for that attack. Nice and snappy there, it's, that's what I like. Again, peaks and valleys different kinds of tones utilizing the really cool single coil pickups that make strats so awesome, okay? So now, after that, I play that B minor, getting that third finger at that C sharp, fourth fret of the, the A string, sliding again to the F sharp ninth fret, okay, of that A string, then creating that D over F sharp, I told you a few moments ago how to play that one, so there it is again. F sharp, A, and D. Just like that, okay? Now, once we get to that, we're gonna do this nice little Hendrixy style riff. And slide out. So, here's how we do that Hendrixy style riff from our D over F sharp, okay? So, our D over F sharp is there. Your third finger should be on the ninth fret of the A string. That's your F sharp. Your first finger should be across the seventh fret of the D string and the G string. So A and D notes respectively there. Okay. Now you play that chord, right? So what happens next is this release the third finger. We're not going to need it on that F sharp anymore. You're going to just play that A and D then hammer on with your third finger on that ninth fret of the D string, that is your B note, then release. Now, again, hybrid picking here. I'm not using the pick on both. I am using the pick on the D string. 
I am using my second finger plucking upwards on the G string. Think of it like a pinch. Okay, so just like that. Now you can put your third finger back on the F sharp, slide it all the way back, then open A string. Okay, I know it's a lot of stuff. This is gonna be a heavy lesson today, folks. We haven't even gotten into the solo yet. So there's gonna be a lot of cool stuff. Don't worry though, the solo is totally doable, I promise. It's super fun too. I'll be breaking that one down into two parts. Okay, so let's go ahead, play this again to give it some context. I have one more little bit after this verse and I will take time for some more questions here. Um, thank you all for the love. You guys are great. Thank you all so much. Glad you guys are enjoying this. How's it going? Fill me in. Those of you, those of you sitting here right now, fill me in. Let me know how it's going. Um, thank you all. This is so, gosh, you got folks from all around the world. This is so, so amazing. Thank you all for being here. It's great spending a Saturday with you all. Okay. So from top, that verse, here we go. I'll do it a little slower, then we'll, then we'll kick up the speed a bit. So here we go. Just like that. One more time. So we're going to go to our A chord after we do that open A string. A sus4 back to A, so. So just like that. I'm using the pick for that one. Again, I want it a little bit brighter than with the fingers. Versus. Hear the difference? Again, finesse, finesse, finesse with the song. Then our riff from the, the bottom of the uh, intro with the open A instead of the open D string. Let's do that again. <laughs> again, we're live, folks, we're live. Um, if you guys, again, are enjoying these, be sure to subscribe to the channel, Angela Petrilli Music, tell your friends. All that good stuff. It's so, so fun. It's so, so fun. These have been just such a blast. I'm glad you guys are enjoying these too. So fun. Okay, so that was the verse there. Uh, again, Super fun, all about finesse. These videos are gonna be up on YouTube, so if there are certain things you wanna rewind and like, how'd you do that again? Check it out online, folks. Check it out on, on YouTube. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into that chorus. The chorus part starts at 51 seconds on, on my video. You guys will see it on the homepage of my YouTube channel. Uh, so, so the chorus starts there. Again, same chords here, folks. A, A sus4, B minor, D over F sharp, okay? <coughs> So let's go ahead and look at that chorus now. I'm choosing to play A up here. And then I go to the inversion, <laughs> then I slide it up. So I play A, I have enough space within this song. So when I was, you know, playing around with this video, I'm like, oh, well, instead of just staying there, let me again, add finesse and some cool melodic interest by doing yet another inversion of that chord in the song. Why not, okay? So we've got our A chord here. Using that thumb here, sliding from that F sharp again to our A note and chord. Okay, so let's do that again. Beautiful stuff, right? Again, adding melodic interest, adding melodic interest here. So there we go, let's do that one more time. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do here, again, that kind of bassy riff, right? 10th fret of that E string, our D note. 
doing the open E string, getting the thumb at the F sharp, sliding all the way up to the B note, seventh fret of the E string. Let's do that again. Leading into our B minor. But this time I give it a little bit of a Hendrixy tone, right? I don't just play it like this. I do this. I give it a little bit of a cool like hammer on, a little bit of an attitude. Like that, okay? So, again, I'll play that through. We'll talk about that B minor lick that I'm doing there. Okay. Like that. So, having that B minor, right? Getting your third finger hammering on real quick to that ninth fret of the G string that is going to be your E note and, and just stop it. Mute it with this part of your right hand. Like that. It's a cool little, it's a cool little inflection. And, and when I was re-watching the video this week, I'm like, I totally forgot I did that. I'm like, oh, I gotta like that. So like that, okay? So again. And stop it, mute it with the hand. Like that, okay? So. It's happening there. After I do that, then I slide it backwards. B minor chord, slide it back. And just let it fade. Let it slide. Like that. All right? We hanging in? I know there's a lot of stuff here. So that's how we're doing that. Now, next part here, I'm gonna do again that E that D to E to F sharp to B riff. Okay, that's happening again, going back to that B minor. All right, so let me do that again in context, starting from the top of the chorus. Again, we're adding our little, little parts here. All right, so here we go. Again, all about groove and finesse, all about groove. It's always, 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 and I wish it was something that you guys could see in the videos, I am constantly tapping my foot. Even when I play live, when I'm practicing, when I'm at a session, even when I do these lessons, I am constantly thinking of time. I have that little, that little parrot on my shoulder that keeps time for me, the little drummer boy, however you wanna think about it. With this song and with every song I play, I am constantly counting. So that is something I really, really want you guys to do too. I tell all of my private students as well, tap with your foot when you're playing. So I'm telling you guys that too. Tap with your foot, keep time. Cause something like this, again, we really wanna make sure the rhythm is good. So playing with the metronome, I know I say this all the time, playing with the metronome is like the best practice you can do for yourself, okay? It is a machine. That, that keeps you accountable, as I like to say. So think about that. Think time, time. That's what helps groove be so awesome, is having just such a great sense of time, okay? So um, let's go ahead. So, so we've got, we're, we're at that B minor. Now we're gonna lead into our D over F sharp. I think we know how to do it by now. Now. When I slide into that, same as I have, you know, previously in the tune. Now, of course I do it a little different. Instead of that little riff I did in the verses, the chorus I changed it, I did this. Okay, so all I'm doing is that first finger is sliding from the seventh fret of that D string and G string to the ninth fret, back to the seventh fret. Okay. Just like that, not too bad. Now, again, hybrid picking here. Pick is playing the D string. Your second finger is plucking upward on that G string. You can see it here on the right hand. Again, pinch, but not too hard. All right, so that's what you wanna do there. Okay, so then from there, 
our A to A sus4. Strum it. Nice and loose, let the pick do the work for you. Don't be too aggressive. See how the attack is really, really light? I'm not. I'm not doing that. You can almost hear the pick, right, brushing up against those strings. Nice, nice light attack with that pick. So then from here, we go to the solo. Okay. So as far as the solo, what's happening here is this, and I'm going to break this up into two different parts. So once the solo is over, folks, we've, we've learned the tune. There's a chorus and then an out. <laughs> and the chorus we have just gone over. So pretty cool, right? So you can go ahead and add that to the solo that we're going to do right now. I'm going to break up the solo into two parts. Again, this is all about feel. I am going to tell you what notes to play, but what makes the solo so fun and so cool, I want you to really, really dig into those notes. I want you to mean them when you play them. Don't just play the notes because they're the right notes. I want you to really feel them. That's what makes the solo great. That's what makes any solo great, any song great. Really, really sit and feel really feel the notes you're playing okay so here is how we get to that solo like i am right in right in after i do that a to a sus4 okay right into it so let's talk about those notes again i'm going to break up the solo into little itty bitty sections, okay? So the solo on my video starts at 110. So part one of the solo, 110 to 131. That's what we're gonna go over right now, okay? So first part is gonna go like this. Just like that, okay? So let's talk about it. First finger, ninth fret of that G string, okay? So I'm starting on the E, then going up a whole step, F sharp, 11th fret of that G string, okay? Using my third finger to get there. Now you'll notice here, I've got a little bit of vibrato, cause, cause I love it. So you throw it in too. Now if you'll notice here, I'm not, the vibrato, the space in which I'm doing it on the fret, I'm not taking up a lot of space. Notice how it's not really wide. I'm not doing that. Because I don't want to change the pitch, right? I just want the note to have a bit of a vibrato, right? And then going to that F sharp. Like that. So, next bit here. I'm gonna get my first finger here, placing that on the A note, which is on the 10th fret of the B string. Now, third finger, bend upward, 12th fret of the B string, that's your B note. Bend it up to C sharp. Then, notice there, I de now, then I deaden the note using this part of my hand here, right? The heel of my palm. Because I don't want to hear it go back down. I don't want that. I don't want that. Mute. Okay. Just like that. Then I go back to my A, A sus4. Okay. Again, I'm playing solos, I'm playing chords at the same time. I am keeping time with the little drummer boy that's sitting on my shoulder here. I am tapping on my foot, whatever it needs. Whatever you need to do to help keep time, okay? Because that's what's really, really important with this. That's the first bit of that solo. Now, I'm using a pick there. If you want a hybrid pick there, great. You can do that too. Or use a pick. Up to you, okay? When I play it live, I do both. So it, it, whatever, whatever you are feeling creatively, folks. 
Okay, so that's the first part. Let's go ahead and do part two. Then I hit that B minor, which is super fun. Okay, so let's do that whole bit. I have this all written out here, so like this. That's part two of the solo. Let's talk about it. So. Or, yeah, those fingers are better. Get your second finger. Place that on the seventh fret, okay, of that G string that is going to be your D note, D as in dog. All right, so from there, what you're gonna do, bring it up a whole step to that E, ninth fret of that G string. Then what you are going to do, place your third finger on the ninth fret of the E string, that is your C sharp. So you've got E and C sharp. Then you have D and B. Aren't those beautiful harmonies? Okay, so that's what's happening there. So we've got this. Now, how I choose to do this, I'm sure some of you notice that. I'm gonna change this here so you can see it a little bit better. I tuck my pick in my hand because I want to play those by themselves and I want to finger pick those two notes. I don't want to play them with a pick. I don't want to hybrid pick them. That's how I choose to do it. Okay, so I've got this. Tucking the pick inwards in between my first and second finger on the right hand. That's a technique that takes a little time. So that's too weird. You can hybrid pick this. If you want to challenge, do it how I do it. And then you put it back to play the B minor. This takes a little time, okay? What I would say in regards to having this technique be a little smoother for me, um, I find it a little more difficult to do with a thinner pick. This is just me. Um, so I like heavier picks. I, I use 0.88s, the, those are the ones that I like. Um, I find that they don't slide out of my hand as much and it just has a little bit more weight to it. I like that, but it's not too heavy. Um, again, 88s are what I like. If you guys like them a little heavier or a little lighter, that's totally up to you. Awesome. Good for you. Um, but for me, this is what works. So like that and then retrieve the pick to play the B minor upward stroke. Okay. Got it. Take your time with that one. It's, it's, it can be a little wacky at first, but I, for me, I like a little bit of a heavier pick. I feel like I have a bit more control with the right hand to do that um, and not have it slip because that is just the worst. It's not fun when the, when the pick flies somewhere. Okay, so that's what's happening there. Now I'm doing my slide again from the F sharp second fret of the E string all the way to the B note. 7th fret E, finish with the B minor chord, upward stroke, and then slide it back. Okay, slide it back, let me do that again. Like that, okay? Give it a good upward stroke, and then bring it back, okay? So that's how we do that. Let's go ahead and look at this next part of the solo, goes like this. I'm using those double stops yet again in this part. Go ahead and get your second finger and your third finger, seventh fret of the G string and E string respectively. So we got our D note and we have our B. Then we have our E and our C sharp. Let me do that again. Then I play my B minor. Like that. Okay, going into that D over F sharp, so. Using my thumb going backwards from the seventh fret, that E, or that D, B, B is in boy. Blah, there we go. B note, seventh fret E string. We're live. Okay, so slide it back, 
third finger, fourth fret, the A string, C sharp. Playing your D over F sharp. Then I finish with this. And don't worry, I'm gonna play this whole thing at the end so you guys can hear it in context. So, just pretty much using my A major double stops. Here's how we do that. Get your third or your second finger, go ahead and bring that to the ninth fret of the G string, that is your E third finger, C sharp, ninth fret, E string. Your D and your B seventh fret, G string, E string, respectively. First finger, fifth fret of the E string is your A. And your second finger is playing the lovely C sharp, sixth fret of the G string, like that. Then from there, our trusty A to A sus4. Use the pick for that, okay? So let me go ahead and play this whole solo. I'm gonna do it, a, I'm gonna do it two times so you can hear it in context. So here we go, from the top of the solo. time. So here we go. From the top of the solo. I'll do this one a little slower. That's part one of the solo. That's part one, okay? So, any questions here making it bluesy, you know it. So, that's what's happening there. I just so love playing this song, it is, it is so fun. And I gotta say, I get a lot of requests from you guys on, on songs to feature on the Riff Rundown, and this has been like the number one song to, I have been getting constant messages on please, please, please cover your version of Tennessee Whiskey. So folks, we're doing it, doing it right now. So, all right, so that is part one of that solo. We're gonna go ahead and look at part two, and then we're pretty much done here, folks. This has, been, this has been the tune. Again, if you guys are having a blast and are enjoying these lessons, I highly, highly encourage you to, to subscribe to the channel, Angela Petrulli Music. There's, there's lots of good stuff happening, lots of great lessons to come. Can't thank the guys at Fishman enough for making these lessons happen. Uh, good, good folks, and make really awesome pickups. This is just great. So again, thank you all so much. You guys are having a blast. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's go ahead and look at part two of the solo. Part two happens from 132 to 154 of my video. Again, it's gonna be on the main page of my YouTube channel. You can go and refer back to that as well along with this lesson on how to play it. So. Here is part two. <clears throat> Let's get it done. Okay, so I'm a big fan of doing those like Stevie Ray, like slide off kind of stuff, Hendrixy slide offs. Clearly, I am tipping to the hat to the awesome Jimi Hendrix in this tune. So, second finger, slide that from the 12th fret of the E string. Give it a good downward stroke, not too heavy. And then on that upward stroke, that is when you slide that E back to open E, okay, so. 
like that. Now, if you don't, if you can't catch that open E, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it's totally okay. As long as you're keeping a consistent slide up the neck. Like that. Good stuff, right? So that's what's happening there. Now, getting into the second half of this. Let's talk about that bit. Okay. Starting at the F sharp, ninth fret A string, but sliding in from the E on the seventh fret of the A. Hitting the F, so E to F sharp, sliding, playing the A note twice, seventh fret of that D string, then hitting B, ninth fret. And again, vibrato on that A. That's what's happening there. Okay, so here we go. Now part two of this. Here's how we do that. Sliding from that B note, ninth fret of the D string. Okay, going to your C sharp, 11th fret, D. Now hitting that E note, ninth fret of the G string, two times. Then hitting your F sharp. Again, notice the vibrato, I'm doing it again. Then you hit that F sharp, 11th fret of the G string, so. Let's combine parts one and two with the Hendrixy intro. Let's give it a little speed. One more time. One more time for good luck. Okay, now the next bit here, or no, I just, I just do it straight. I don't even bend it. So, getting that second finger, sliding it from the E note, ninth fret of the G string, to that F sharp, 11th fret G. Getting our A note here, 10th fret of the B string, hitting that twice. Hitting the B, 12th fret, B string, one time. Okay, now what you're gonna do is bend. Bend to the 12th fret of that B string, resolving on A, vibrato. Let's do that whole bit, okay? Again. One more time. Now let's do it with a little speed. Now the next part, let's talk about that. A note, 10th fret, B string. Going to the 13th fret of that B string, bending up. Then going to the 12th fret, bending up. Going back, hitting A twice, 10th fret, B string. Here's the riff. Going back to B, give it a good bend. Muting with the, this part of your hand, okay? So. Mute. Let's 
Let's do context from the top of the solo. <laughs> Again. Just like that. Now the next part sounds like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and talk about that. Again, using some cool double stops. I love using these in solos. What we're gonna do here, the one that I'm using here comes from the D major. Again, Hendrixy style, think Hendrix here. So my second finger placing that on the A, 10th fret of that B string, my first finger is going on the 9th fret of the G string, that is E, okay? Then what I'm gonna do here, that's what it should sound like. But we wanna do, get your third finger now, okay? Keep the first finger where it is, don't move it. Not yet, okay, so keep it there. You're gonna get your third finger and you're gonna put that on the 11th fret of the G string, it's gonna be your F sharp. Hybrid picking here, the pick should be on the G string, plucking upwards with your middle finger on the B string. Slight pinch. And you're gonna hammer on, like that. So that's the move there. I'll play that a few times. And again, vibrato. Okay, so that's that riff. Now, lifting your first finger, not your first finger, your third finger. third finger on that 11th fret of that D string, it's your C sharp, bring that back a whole step to B, 9th fret, to the 7th fret A of that D string, finishing there with the F sharp on the 9th fret of that E string, okay? So here is that riff. can't see it it's off camera I'm tapping my foot one two three four to do this slow for you guys a little bit faster here now now the last little bit of the solo goes like this okay or at least the second to last the penultimate bit of the tune so here we go so we've got coming from this. So what's happening there? Playing your E to F sharp, ninth fret to seventh fret to ninth fret of that A string to your A seventh fret of that D string, vibrato. Okay. Now, third finger. Put that on the ninth fret of that D string. Then go to the tenth and come back to the ninth. Back to the seventh. A little faster. That's where you want it. it has a little bit of attitude. It's cool. That's that bit there. Here's the next part. So you're going from E to F sharp to A, F sharp, A. All right, so that's what's happening there from the bit here. A 
whole speed. Now our run begins. So, from there we are sliding from the 9th fret of that D string to the 11th. Okay, if we're keeping tabs on notes, that is B to C sharp. Then we're going from that E to F sharp, 9th fret, and 11th fret of that G string. Sliding again. Then going first fingers A to B. Just a nice little... Bending the B string upwards to that C sharp. That's where we're bending to. Again, when you're doing that bend, use the help of that first and second finger to help get you there. So that move there, pinky finger goes on the E note, 12th fret of the E string. So. See, kind of getting like sort of a country feel. Bring it back down with the E. Notice how it, it flies together. Lost my pick, but that's okay. Again, another one. Finishing with the A note, which is our root. And then back to the chorus. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and play the entire solo. And then, folks, we did it. We got through Tennessee Whiskey, my, at least my version of it. So here, here we go. Again, solo part. You guys are doing great. This has been so, so much fun. Again, if you guys are enjoying, be sure to tell a friend. Subscribe to the channel. It helps the cause. Thanks again to the folks at Fishman. Here we go. B minor in that too. <clears throat> so there is the tune guys. There is Tennessee Whiskey. Again, I hope you guys had fun with this one. I think this has been my longest lesson to yet. There's just so much depth and so much detail. I hope I was able to illustrate all the little intricacies that I do um, to play this song. Again, a super, super fun song to play and am just humbled by all the views on that video. So I figured it would be a really, really great time four years later to make, <laughs> to make an instructional video on how to play that tune, at least in, in, in my style. Really, really great, great song. So again, I'm wishing you guys much success. If you enjoy these videos, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Kudos to the folks at Fishman for making these happen. And thank all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making these happen. Thanks for coming back week after week, sharing the videos and all the fun comments. I am so, so thrilled that these are helping you play and learn guitar. Um, again, my name is Angela Petrilli. These are such a blast. I think I'll be doing an acoustic one next week. Uh, so have your acoustic guitars ready. I always leave hints on YouTube in my community section on which song I'm going to be playing that week. So definitely be sure to subscribe so you folks get a, get a head start on what I will be playing this week. So again, thank you all so, so much. This has been such a pleasure to teach this one to you today. I always am sending you all much, much success. Let's put some music in the world. Let's make this place a better, a better place to live. So thank you all so much. Wishing you all much success. I will see you same time, same channel next week, Saturdays, 12 p.m. Pacific. Again, my name is Angela Petrilli. Thank you all so, so much.